Mayday, mayday! I think we might be in a very problematic situation right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Stranded Alien Dawn. Crashing onto Surprise right now, a planet. And this is where we just, yeah, landed. Not that smoothly. Uh, who is we anyway? That's Amber, Jack, Quinn and Rita. Uh, four story souls that survived a spaceship crash at this very moment. And they're not having a good time. There's still debris coming down right now. So they might actually also just die right away. Um, and there is another debris landing. There is another debris landing. Quinn is having a meltdown. Rita is in a state of shock. And Jack, Jack is trying to calm everyone down in a very composed manner. Now we are here on this planet. The moon Chaos is looking down on us. A beautiful big lake in our surrounding area as well. So the starting location is not so bad. Um, yeah, we're still having burning debris everywhere here. Also my landing pot here. Of course, with that, we probably will not be able to go back to space. We might salvage it actually for something useful. Also lots of debris and stuff that we can use still in our surrounding area. So we probably should start by having a little storage area where we can store these goods. And let's just get started with that right away. Somewhere here with six tiles. Let's make it six tiles for now. A little storage area really where we can start um, well, storing and stockpiling things. I would also like to work on my first sleeping bag uh, spots and also shelter with a roof on our head. Um, for the following nights and for this we actually need some sticks and hay. Let's have a look at that The giant grass here gives me hay So let's actually just cut this down and we also have some bushes here that would give me then some sticks Both of them are going to be very useful. All right with a task at hand people actually Fix their composure again and go back to yeah to working focusing on what's important and that is surviving It's a beautiful day at least. It is spring right now, year one. Nine degrees only. It's not that that warm, but hopefully it's getting warmer on this planet. 10 o'clock in the morning, so we have the whole day um, to work on some basic sleeping spots. I hope we can actually manage to do this. In our surrounding area, lots of very strange things are happening. We do have these twisted plants. We have no idea what they're all about. We have over here a flathead animal. Might be rather aggressive or also not. I have no idea yet. Very strange pointy red plants and also very clumsy looking fat animals. Um, no idea what these are all about. I guess we'll have to find out. Construction the base continues. Jack is cutting down some additional sticks and with that we might actually have now the ability to build us the first shelters. There it is. Some place to sleep in at least. This should be my first goal. So let's just check it out here real quick. And I'm probably going to build me some two shelters right away. In those shelters, we can also have the sleeping bots for our first survivors. Sleeping together, keeping each self warm and in company. Of course, they will not like it so much after a couple of days but for now this is the best option we have and boy do we have a nice view over the lake all of these survivors have different traits so let's just also have a look at that Jack, for example, is really good with fighting he is however more interested in crafting he's not very good at that yet of course we can change this and this means also he likes it and he gains experience points on that really quickly. So we should heat that. Also we got Ember here. She's not really good at crafting and also doesn't care about it. She's good with combat. She's not really interested in anything unfortunately. A bit of intellect so this could help out. Quinn, he's inter interested in intellect stuff. He's not interested in combat however. He will be a good researcher probably down the road and anything that is doing something with crafting and construction. And then we got Rita here. She's very much interested in cooking. She's not very good at that though yet. So the, her meals in the beginning might not be tasty. However, she can learn on that. Also, she's interested in farming and already very good at that. So for fields, this might just work. Now, the sleeping spots have been finished so with the shelter. So in this case here, we can also activate the roof. And we can see that for now, we have a safe space actually to sleep in. Next in, I would like to work on a campfire right away. We can use a bit of a scrap metal that we have in the surrounding area to start cooking on that. For that, I would like to work on a bit more roof because with that, we can really keep everyone then in. And let's just continue with the 
expansion of my base right over here. And the cool thing is we can add a second row of shelters and the game will then adjust itself to make this one a bigger room as well. In here we can then have a nice campfire, something where we can cook stuff and also provide some light to the surrounding area. With the sticks that we have and the hay, we can continue quickly building all these shelters. I probably will need to get rid of a few more bushes right over here to get those materials in. We can also start exploring some of the surrounding area that we can use for some harvesting and fielding, right? So food, of course, will also be a problem really quickly beside the sleeping. Uh, we could hunt down animals. So I can see there is a dead animal here. Sometimes they just die and we can butcher it. So let's go ahead and butcher this animal here. There is also some another animal here. They probably died because those debris fell on them or close to them so that they got killed by the shockwave. So that's at least two dead animals and as we can see Ember is already on her way doing the deed. We also get the message here, we have only four days left with the food supplies that we currently have. We can always look around if we want to find more animals that we can butcher that would help us out as well. I should also work on getting a few logs in and for this we have those trees over there. So let's start cutting down some trees as well. Though not the closest ones, I do like to have some shade. You don't know how warm summer gets on this planet. Jack is not really happy right now. He had to eat while being on foot. So we probably should also change this in the future. He's now cutting down some trees though. Meanwhile, the next shelters are getting finished and wrapped up. We have a nice sleeping area now. We're going to have a nice cooking area here. And for this, we should then also work on some table. For this, however, we will need logs. Rita is still in a, in a state of shock, it seems. She's watching the flames and smoke. We might also give her something to do. That's, however, not very easy because she's apparently not very good at most things, really. However, cooking and farming will be something for the future. It's nighttime now, so 18 o'clock in the evening. At least we have some place to sleep. Nothing to cook yet, though. And I think Amber has gotten the butchering done and she's now delivering meat back to the base. Quinn in the meantime is finishing that campfire and with that we have some light in the base and we also have a place to cook. And here I do have now some quick recipes. Since we get some meat in, we can now order someone to cook meat soup until we have, let's say, four. But I don't want to cook too much because meat soups spoil rather quickly. Um, the raw meat actually is a bit more sustainable in the background, right? So we can prolong the life of that food by yeah, using the maximum duration of the meat and then once again also of the veggies uh, of the, the meat soup done here until we have that. Now we need to decide who actually cooks this stuff and of course Rita is going to be the right lady for that job. So let's have a look at my activities there real quick and we can see um, in the priorities we have Rita over there and she's going to be a great cook so she's going to be priority one for cooking. Whenever there's something to cook, she's going to do the job and no one else, please, right? So I'm going to disable it for anyone else. He's also going to work on harvesting stuff and he's going to work on yeah, ranching. That's a bit later, but on planting stuff as well. So whenever those things are required, she's doing it. Meanwhile, we got some logs in as well. So I think it might be a good time now to work on a table. A large table to really house for four people might be the safest one. And we could have that table pretty close to the fire most likely. Go ahead and build us a table together with two chairs. Let's make it four chairs actually. And we're going of course with the basic chairs that we have. A wooden one for three logs only. Four of them sitting by the fire should be nice. Rita, meanwhile, starts the cooking. Perfect. Does it make her happy already? Yes, interested in cooking and because she can do stuff that she's interested in, she gains happiness. She's not really happy because she ate on food, was annoyed by Quinn and also is still in a little pain from the crash.
Meanwhile, the chopping continues and yeah, we're getting back all the logs from the trees. To also then construct some large tables. I would also like to work on other things right away. We do need some storage under the, the roof. So a shelf is most likely the one. It will consume some logs. And yeah, we can have a sh um, some shelves here. For example, here in the back. So this is where we can then store valuable resources. Also, I would like to start on working on some additional uh, production tables. And that's a workbench that we can have. Probably should then also be really close here to my to my storages, right? Because we are going to need those raw materials, a workbench, and I might also start with some researching with a research bench. And the good thing about those is that it's under a roof so they can work even during rainy days. Rita continues with the cooking. Right now though, the food is in the open, right? So if you look at that, it actually spoils outside within two days. If it's under a roof, it will actually already live for four days. And if it's refrigerated, eight days and frozen indefinite. And everything counts here. Also with the meat, it should not stay outside really. Under a roof, it will last way more. All right, we continue with the tables and the chairs. So now finally we have a place to, to sit on. And the next soup is ready too. It's time to sleep though. It's really late in the evening. I mean, they were all pretty excited from the crash, obviously. Day one is over. Jack is, I think, no, he just delivered the logs. He's also now going to sleep. And with that, the first day is over. Not so bad, all things considered. It's the next day. The sun is coming up. Everybody's going to get a meat soup. Perfect. And going to eat on the table. Amber continues with the construction of my first shelf. Very important that one is. There you go. And with this, we can now finally start storing resources. So I would like to use the shelf for raw food, cooked meals. Uh, we're going to disable though anything else on it. The medicine we can also keep, right? And on the storage stockpiles outside, I'm going to disable now the raw food and the cooked food. So this is no longer allowed here. So my people will now get this to the shelf and also medicine is no longer allowed in here. And with that, food lasts just a bit longer. Perfect. We put together a camp as quick as we could, considering the circumstances. We're not sleeping in the dirt. We have a roof over our heads and a fire to illuminate the dark, uncertain nights. And the most important, we have survived. To us, this feels like an achievement worth honoring. We can gather around the campfire and celebrate being alive at 19 tonight. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do this. So there's going to be a celebration. Also, we have finished now the research desk and the wooden workshop. We can now start crafting things in here, like bandages, animal fats, and slop. And in the research, we can start with that. And I would like to start with this very extensive tech tree. And of course, as always, it's important the way we go for. Let's start with the lightning rods. If there's a thunderstorm, lightning goes down. We don't want to hit my settlers with that, or we don't want to get hit uh, with lightning uh, on the shelters. That would lead to a fire and a lot of destruction. Next up, probably weaponsmithing right away. I'm expecting the first animal attacks soon, so they will become more aggressive out there. And then probably also some metal refinement. Who is doing it? Queen is doing it. He loves it. He's interested in intellect and I love doing this researching that is. He's also really good at that. So once again, the next activity we can set in, that's Quinn and that's for researching number priority one. He's going to do this to get really good at that stuff. It might also be worth it now scavenging that landing pot here. Amber will be able to do this and perhaps we find some good stuff in there, right? Metal at least. And let's just have a look at her skills for uh, combat healing. She's good with physical stuff, so that is scavenging. And in that case, she can do the job now. All of them also, by the way, have equipment. 
right now some basic stuff spaceship jackets here that have give or they give them also temperature tolerances towards heat and cold temperature and of course also to defense so we should make sure that for winter we have appropriate gear then as well we don't have any weapons save the laser pistol so we really need to start also then with some weapon smithing there it is the research of the lightning rod has been finished and with that we can go ahead and build us that lightning rod probably somewhere here in the center to get in as much of the area that we want to build in as possible And there's also Jack coming back home with 144 logs. With that wood, we should probably also work on our defense right away. And with that, I would like to start with a smaller wooden fence that we can have. And let's just see how we can get this cracking. And then we probably go around that all the way here around the spaceship because that's a lot of space that we can use all the way around here and then also all the way around or behind my camp to the other side again this is going to take a while and it's going to consume a lot of logs but it's going to be worth it here we actually need to do it like that because there's a hill going up right so i cannot build a fence on the hill of course For this we will need more logs, so let's just have a look at those trees close by. And I would probably also cut down those trees here. We should also look out for any animals that died again that we can butcher without hunting, because hunting is risky. They might fight back actually, and this could lead to sickness and injuries. There is another one, let's butcher it. No other animals here though, I think. I think on the other side we might also be finding us some animals there. But none of them is dead, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Amber continues with the construction of the fence. We also have some insufficient storage, especially for building materials. So I would like to increase my storage there a bit with those stockpiles. Do another one right away. And the next day is over, day two, it is 19 o'clock, so they are now gathering for a quick celebration. Jack, however, still transporting some sticks. We're all waiting for Jack. Now they're celebrating though. I like Jack. He's the most straightforward out of them. It's raining a bit. Lucky us, we have enough roofs. And also, my lightning rod has been finished. Celebrating and building is exhausting, so this night we're going into bed way earlier than the last day. Another day is a dawning. Quinn and Rita are going to do her passions. That is cooking and researching and they like this right away. Tack and Amber are going to eat because they will need to have a busy physical day ahead of them. Lots of fence construction, scavenging and chopping of trees. Also, we have finished the weaponsmithing and we have scavenged already one leather boot out of the rack. Perfect. Weaponsmithing though, that's the important thing. So we can now start crafting weapons. We do have, yeah, resources for the spear. For bow, unfortunately, we would need fabrics that is synthetics, leather, or cloth. Unfortunately, we don't have any of that yet. Animals haven't really given us leather, unfortunately. So the spear it is, some basic crude weapon. Let's actually produce it two times um, to have at least two more weapons or two more um, settlers with weapons in hand. And for crafting, we can actually do the activity once again based on their interest. And I think Jack was the one, right? So he can now have a high interest in crafting. And this should be his highest priority. 
Unfortunately, in the middle of the construction of the fence, we get the first 33 aggressive animals. They are right beside our camp, really. They are going to gather here now and preparing their attack. However, they will attack us now on site then. So we need to really continue with the preparation of the fence. This will not be finished for the day. So this will be quite the battle, unfortunately. Jack is crafting the first weapon. Some very basic stuff. But he's happy, happy about that. And hopefully we can finish it before those animals attack. It would help us a great deal. And lo and behold, just as the animals attack, we finish that spear. It's a partial fail, so it's not a good weapon there, unfortunately. Ember, please get over here. We will now have to draft them. Jack is going to equip the, the laser pistol. He's the best with the combat skill. There is the weapon. Ember picks up the spear. She's the second best with the combat skill. And Quinn and Rita, yeah, well, they will stick behind and fight with their fists. Amber is ready. You can also put her in draft mode. The same goes with Jack. Unfortunately, we don't have any defenses at this point as those beetles start to attack. Jack is good with the, the pistol there. Let's actually get him back. Amber will fight. Jack will continue with the shooting. Unfortunately, they target Jack quite a bit. So he's got no chance of really fighting there as well. Looks good though. Nine more remain. The spear is doing a good job there. Four more animals. Where are they? They are coming in right now. And Jack takes care of them. There it is. The first attack was not that bad. Unfortunately, all of them are wounded in some way. Rita will do the treating though because she is not really severely wounded, right? And superficial bite, right? I think Quinn is bleeding right now, so he is the highest priority. We do have, unfortunately, 10 first aid kits out of the crash. So we do have some basic material available right now to quickly heal wounds. And Rita, yeah, she's actually not that bad with healing level two so she can do this i think amber also is not so bad and she's already healing jack that also leaves the matter of all these slaughtered beetles we can butcher them for some meat And with that, Amber already reached healing level 4. Seems like she's rather passionate about that. And she's going to be a good doctor for the camp. Yeah, the wounds for Jack look a bit more severe. But he's been treated now, and now it's on to Rita. Alright, everybody goes to eat. It's pretty late now, so I think they will then also go to sleep rather quickly. We're low on food supplies. I will not wonder about that or I'm not worried about that because we got lots of meat now that we can then use in our soup. Quinn continues with the construction of the fence. That's more important than ever. The next attack will probably be not so easy anymore on us. We have also finished the metal refinement, so once again I can now decide on some new things that we can research. There's going to be quite a few more important ones now. Um, for that, tailoring is pretty important, that we can start producing cloth for us. Also pretty important, the chitin synthetics, and with that we can make fiber out of, or synthetics out of, insect meat. And this is definitely something I would like to have. In fact, I would like to research this first, and then we're going with the tailoring. So, Rita? What are you doing here, Rita? You have no business doing researching. You're level three on the intellect. It's not bad, not great either. So she's going to be a researcher three. Jack is zero and Amber is zero. 
So only when Queen has nothing else to do, Rita can actually do some researching, that's fine. The next day is dawning already. Hmm, Jack and Rita haven't slept. I guess all that fighting made them quite nervous and he doesn't even need rest, right? So he's pretty pumped from the fighting still and that means he can work through the night. Also metal refinement has been researched. That's also a very important one. For this we however need a bit of stone to get this one working. Let's have a look at some stone deposits that we might have close by. There is a, a mountain and yep, there is some rocks that we can then mine. Let's go ahead and mine two of them. It's going to take a while anyway. Day four it is for this day. The most important task is of course finishing this very big fence. Uh, it's a really big construction. Doing some more researching and starting then with the processing of metal. And of course we should also have a look at the local flora and fauna and observing the first plants that we can use then for some farming. So far so good. We have survived so far. The first attack is over too. And we continue onwards in Stranded Alien Dawn with day four onwards in the next episode. Cheers!